everyone and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be talking about my eight favorite Google shopping campaign types. I managed over 2 million in ad spend across shopping campaigns last year. So I think I'm a pretty good source for information. I'm going to share today some of my favorite campaign types that I think can work really well whether you have a small budget or a large budget. The caveat here being that you don't have to do all eight of these though I recommend you test and see which ones work the best for your account, and maybe you can combine a few different ones. So I'm gonna start off by talking about the first one, which is called product categories. This is where you separate your products into different groups. You've likely already done this in your catalog, and you have your merchant center account set up this way. Now, that being said, to set a campaign like this up, if you haven't set one up like this before, is pretty easy. So you'll go and you'll create your shopping campaign as normal, and then you create your ad groups. What I like to do is that for each ad group, I assign one product category to that ad group. So if we click into office chair here, and in this example, I'm pretending that I'm a chair company, you'll see that I have selected the only product group for the office chair ad group by product type is called office chair. So everything else is excluded. We are just targeting the office chair product type. As we go to the other ad group called gaming chair, you'll see we've done the exact same thing here. We are only targeting gaming chair. Everything else is being excluded. So just a quick demo of if you wanted to replicate this on your campaign, you'll go and add a new ad group. Let's call it leather chair. Save. I set a $1 bid, but your bids may vary, of course. And you're going to be presented with this screen in the product grouping level, which this is basically your ad level in, in so far as a shopping campaign. And what you're going to do here is click add subdivision under all products. Now here, I don't have any product types in my account, but for demonstration purposes, I'm going to add the bulk values manually. This is ironically the way I would do it even if I did have products because I do a lot of my work outside of Google Ads, either in Sheets or Google Ads Editor. So we're going to pretend that the product type here is called leather chair. We're going to add it in, confirm, and then I'll edit the bid. Looks good to me. And then we're not done yet. So if you leave it here, What'll happen is that you're actually bidding on everything in the entire catalog because you have the subdivision of leather chair, but you also have a subdivision of everything else that is within all products. So very important point of order. This is very easy to make a mistake on if you're just doing this for the first time. Go here and press exclude. And so this is a campaign type that I like quite a lot. Another version of this is called a single product campaign or a single product category campaign. This is sort of like a SCAG on the Google Ads side where you are grouping one closely knit group of products and you are forcing the Google algorithm to make it work for that group of products. I've seen all versions of this work, though my favorite recently due to improvements in the algorithm in 2024 has definitely been the grouped product categories where you have multiple product categories by ad group. And the reason that I like this the most is because I've found that when a campaign has more data flowing through it, as opposed to multiple campaigns having segmented data flowing through them, the algorithm performs better. The learning there essentially for you is I would start with a more generic product categories campaign where you're breaking out the different ad groups and you can see their, their performance. If you see that one category is really performing the best, maybe you pause some others. If you see that one category is getting a lot of volume, but it's not performing very well, maybe you segment it into its own campaign. I, I should definitely mention here that these campaigns are in this demonstration going to be set at maximum cost per click or manual cost per click. But in your account, if you have enough conversions, I highly recommend just going right out the gate with target return on investment. And that's what I've done across my clients. And I've had no problems using target return on investment as long as I'm being reasonable with my expectations. I've had no problem scaling as well. I recommend always using a bidding strategy these days that uses Google algor algorithm for purchases, especially. So let's move on to the second campaign type. 
that I want to talk about today, which is called all products 300% plus. Now, 300% is the target return on investment we're looking for in this case. There's a lot of different target return on ad spends that people are looking for from cold acquisition, like shopping. But in my experience, I've seen that any brand at scale can make a 300% return on investment on cold traffic work quite well for their needs. Use the numbers that work for your business, please. So this is a very simple ad group, and there's a few different ways that you can organize it on the product grouping side. The biggest issue that happens with shopping campaigns and people's understanding of shopping campaigns most of the time in my experience is that they make it too complicated or they don't know how to organize their products on the back end. So if you have an organized merchant center and you're pulling in the pieces of data that you need to pull in, all of these groupings will be way more simple for you to handle on the ads end. So if you have an organized merchant center, you will have an organized Google ads account. That is the takeaway. Um, so how do we do this where we essentially want to target a group of products in our catalog that have historically given us a 300% or higher return on investment? There's a couple of things to look at. One is that on your sidebar, you're going to have a products page and you'll go to this products page and you'll look at all of your products and you'll organize them by the conversion value over cost for specifically product sales. And you'll look at those products that have a 300% or greater return on ad spend over a long period of time, let's say at least 90 days. And then those will be the products that you'll select. In terms of how you organize them for segmenting the actual product groups out and making the subdivisions, there's a couple of different ways you can do it. The most frequent way I see this is I'll talk to a sales manager or someone that is really familiar with the product catalog and they'll know by the back of their hand, you know, it's going to be a product ID, this product ID, that it's going to be SKU this SKU that, and they're going to be able to tell me the exact SKUs that I can then input. And then I can go back to the subdivision and organize them by item ID, enter all of my values here, 300% product this or the skew this right i add them all in and we're good to go i've got all of the products specifically segmented and then as new winners come to the list i can just add them one by one here or if you know i get a, a new report that says okay there's 100 products that have been added there's 50 that have been removed i can make all of those decisions here and make those saves very very quickly so I like this type of campaign because it's like combining all of your winners and you're trying to just group them all into this big mass of data that helps you potentially achieve a greater daily scale. Shopping's really a scale game in my experience. If you get enough data going and enough momentum, you'll get served in more placements. You're going to be more competitive against other people in your industries. And it's really a win more situation as opposed to sometimes in search, search is more of an efficiency play a lot of the time where the search volumes may not be changing that much. Everybody kind of knows their audience. Shopping is really like a completely different beast in that sense. It's very much about momentum. If you can get further up the charts and make the margins work, it can be very powerful. I like grouping winners in some cases like this. This can be a very powerful campaign type, especially if you have a lot of different products that have the potential to give you a high return on investment. Let's move on to the third campaign here. We're going with a very similar campaign type, which is based on ASP. And ASP just means average selling price. And so the way that you would find average selling price is just by looking at your product catalog data. This is usually for larger companies that are doing hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars in sales per year, and especially those that have larger product catalogs where you might sell a $50 product, um, but you also might sell $3,000 of product or a product that has an average selling price per unit of $800, $900. So there's a huge amount of variance between someone that's going to spend $50 at your store and $900. 
And so I like to use this campaign for those types of retailers. So if you're a retailer where this is totally making sense to you, you're like, yeah, we got like a hundred products. Someone might come in, spend $10 on this thing, but they might also leave the store with a tractor that's $10,000. This is the type of campaign for you. Um, so how you grab this is you find the midpoint of your catalog. The item IDs that are above your midpoint um, can get tagged with a custom label. In my case, it's custom label two that's called strong average selling price, or maybe it's above a certain value. Then you group all of them there and you have this product group that essentially is always updated with whatever the products or the item IDs above your average that you don't have to manage much on the actual campaign side once this is set up. Sister campaign to this is called ASP below middle. So there's a lot of cases where people have the majority of their sales volume come from products that sell really frequently. You might sell a thousand five dollar products and you might only sell one one thousand dollar product every month, right? That five thousand dollars is worth a lot to the business. It would lead the algorithm to look for different people when you're trying to make a couple of dollars margin versus when you're trying to make 500 or $600 margin. That's a completely different type of customer. But you wanna set up the algorithm in order to really react to that and take that into account. And so some people make this type of campaign even more stratified. So if you have a ton of variants across your catalog, it can be beneficial to have a bottom 20% or quartile ASP campaigns, but I didn't want to make it too complicated for a video that seems like it's going to go to 30 minutes. And hopefully this ends up useful. If it is, please leave me a comment down below. But this, this campaign can really be helpful for those high volume, maybe lower margin, lower selling price items. Now we're getting into some of my favorite campaign types. First of all, I'm going to start with the worst sellers catalog. The worst sellers catalog is based on your own sales data. This, this is essentially the products that you know are just the worst. They don't have consistent sales. Sometimes you wonder why they're even in your catalog, if you should even sell them. And my favorite thing to do is to only run these products in a worst sellers campaign. I absolutely love this campaign type because it forces the Google algorithm, which is really good at deprioritizing low performing pieces of your portfolio. And it says, Hey, I'm only going to give you the worst stuff. And if you want me to spend money here on a target ROAS basis, you have to make this work. You have to find people that want to buy these products. This is one of my favorite campaign types. I've had really good results with this because you're essentially taking villains of your portfolio that are usually just the worst part that you're always unhappy about. And you're saying, you know what? I can actually get some value out of this. There's some juice to squeeze here and I can help the laggards of my products actually deliver a pretty strong result. The similar version of this is my sixth campaign type, which is the shopping side. Sometimes on the whole, a lot of your strongest products generally are also going to be your strongest shopping products, but there's also going to be some times where some products that should be performing well, just are not performing well on shopping at all. And so this is where I'll look at the shopping data and I'll organize the catalog into poor shopping performers. I'll throw the bottom 20% into this campaign. And so the way that this looks like in this case is just a custom label called worst seller shopping, but you can also do it um, by a specific item ID with this chair company, maybe office chair 79 is a poor performer. And we need to make sure Google has only poor performers here. And that's our group of the lowest 20% performers by shopping sales. So uh, then we just go, we save those here. We make sure they are included. Excellent. So we've got those included. Everything else is excluded. Always make sure you're excluding everything else that you're not targeting. And let's move on to the last group, which if you've been looking at my filters here, you can see is a best sellers focused campaign. 
So again, this the idea here is that just as you want to make sure that the algorithm has all the tools it needs to improve the performance of the worst pieces of your product catalog, you also want to make sure that it has the ability to get even greater dividends from the best sellers within your catalog. The way that you tackle your bid strategies around this can vary depending on your needs. Sometimes people will say, I'm going to give them my best sellers and I'm going to set an even more defensive return on investment target. If on a blended basis, my portfolio is giving me a 3x return on investment from shopping, but I know my best sellers on average give a four and a half, maybe I'll set my target ROAS at a four. Or maybe they'll say, you know what? I could sell twice as many best sellers and I would be totally happy if the blended ROAS on that went to a 3.5 and they set their ROAS, target ROAS to a three. So by setting only the absolute best products on a catalog basis in the same campaign, you can deliver really strong scalability and you can essentially find an asymptote. In other words, the point at which you have diminishing returns on your spend really effectively with this type of campaign. And then the brother or sister campaign to this is just the shopping version. And so again, your top 10 products in your catalog may be the same as the top 10 products in your shopping campaign or all-time shopping sales, but not always. And so this is always just a campaign worth looking at and assessing, is this something I should do or try out? But with that, that's all eight campaigns that we've looked over today. If you need any help with your shopping campaigns or you're really struggling to get your shopping campaigns off the ground, I offer two services. One of them is a coaching service and the other one is a done for you ads management service that me and my team can help you take everything to the next level, whether it's merchant center, whether it's your product feed, whether it's setting up your product campaigns or, or scaling shopping to the next level. Let me know, please, if this was helpful, leave a comment or subscribe. It really helps. I'm trying to deliver a lot more value on the channel this year. And you guys have been so great. So thanks so much and hope you have a great time scaling your shopping campaigns.